This program is presented by the City Library, and I'm Paul Reynolds from the library. Thank, a big thanks today to the Living Traditions Festival and the um, City Arts Council. We partnered with them on today's program and worked with them, and it was a delight. And this is kind of a special edition of 12 Minutes Max, where we chose artists that are working from a very specific um, cultural tradition, and in, the, and in the case of all three, kind of pushing the boundaries of that, of that tradition. What you will be seeing today are three works by local artists, and as we always do at 12 Minutes Max, these are original and, and new works. The artists will stay on the stage following their presentations and take questions for a few minutes. So we'll do a little Q and A. Happy to have you be thinking of questions for our artists. We like to try to keep the um, Q and A to about five questions so that we can keep moving. Join us next month. This is an ongoing pro program at the library that we've been doing for about nine years. And we present this every month on the third Sunday of the month at 2 o'clock. So we just happen to hit on our regular day um, in tandem with Living Traditions this time. If you'd like to learn more about 12 Minutes Max, you can join the library's Facebook page and you'll get information about it. Where it's listed in, our, um, in the events calendar on the library's website, so you can go there. And we also have an email list that we're happy to include you in. There's a little sign-up sheet on the table that's just outside the auditorium. So if you'd like to get an email that's a reminder about the upcoming 12 minutes max, and you can read about the artists that will be performing, we're happy to include you in that, in that list. Right now is the time for me to remind everyone to sign your phones, please. I remember this time, mine's, mine's on Fibery. Um, so please, please do that if you haven't already. Thank you so much to the artists who have brought, brought their work for us today. Um, wonderful, uh, wonderful pieces for you to see. Thanks also to the library for their support of this program. And as always, to Jason and Alonso, my colleagues that um, make this thing work. So let's get started. Uh, first off, we have music from Neon Natives. Neon Natives uh, performed for us when we were doing 12 Minutes Max um, as a virtual show, and we actually broadcast from his home, and now we get to have Neon Natives back live at, uh, for our show, and I'm really thrilled to, to have him here. He does a combination of traditional music and modern sound bites that are um, indigenous activists speaking. All set to a variety of electronic ingredients as you're about to see. Uh, Neon Ayers is a member of the Denaf Nation and also has strong San Carlos Apache roots. Help me welcome Neon Ayers.
Questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> My vocals actually come from my friends, you know. Um, that last song, her name's Alex. She lives out on the Navajo Reservation around Shiprock. And I actually came across that video when she was singing at the Summer Solstice in Farmington, New Mexico. That was one of her songs. And, you know, what I really love about that song, you know, in, in the English translation, she talks about children having, you know, beautiful dreams and happy thoughts. So that's where I get that song from. Any more questions? Well, well yeah. Okay. What was the inspiration behind this specific uh, arrangement? Uh, you know what? It's really my sense of identity, you know, in the modern world as an indigenous person, you know, because you know, everyone's kind of doing the same thing and becoming, you know, I don't want to say assimilated into like just doing the you know, same thing over and over again. And so I wanted to do something different, you know, I wanted to do something familiar. I wanted to bridge the gaps between the generations of my community, you know, because uh, a lot of the songs, you know, like the traditional songs, you know, they're, they're losing her, we're losing them, you know. Uh, a lot of our kids these days, you know, they don't know the traditional songs, you know, because they don't care to get to know it or it doesn't inspire them or it doesn't get them motivated to do anything. And so this is my way to 
bridge those gaps, have a sense of identity, and you know, keep my culture alive, you know, because for 500 years we've just been swept under the rug, you know. There's a lot of things that, you know, we're not mentioned about in history, like our laws, our land, the agriculture, the medicine that, you know, we all provided with you guys when you first came here, when your ancestors first came here. So that's the inspiration for my music. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, you can follow me on all my social medias um, at Neon Natives with the Z, so it's N E O N N A T I V E S or Z Z at the end. Yeah. So um, you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook. <clears throat> I have a YouTube uh, video that just surpassed five million views. So you can check me out on YouTube. Um, yeah, you can also find all my music if you like what you heard today. All of our music is available on your favorite streaming services like Spotify and iTunes, Amazon, and SoundCloud, you know, whatever you guys got. So. Any more questions? Yes. yes. I have a long time for <laughs> Also, thank you. perspective you know it's it's a great honor and privilege for me to to be even allowed to have a space like this to share my music my culture my identity because you know us as indigenous people we weren't allowed to practice our songs our dances until like the, the mid 70s you know it was banned it was forbidden not even children could dance you know our traditional dances back then and you know for me, it gives me a sense of, well, I don't want to say empowerment, but you know, it's just like, my ancestors weren't allowed to have this space to be themselves, you know, because it was always frowned upon and shamed and it was, a, it was against the law, you know, it was against the law to be an Indian. So for me to be up here and to share my, my music, my culture, my people, my identity, it's, it's a great honor because my ancestors before me didn't have that, and I do. So thank you guys for being here and listening. Appreciate it. Any more questions? One more question? Yes. yes. So uh, I know the music plays a huge role in the Indian community, especially with Navajo. And I'm just wondering, it was so evocative it ex uh, for me personally. Like some of the songs were very like, emotional. Mm -hmm. Music is medicine. That's why we have powwows. And that's, if you look at any groups of people, we're like the only groups of people that just have powwows just because, you know. And even, even past powwows into the, in, the individual indigenous communities, they have their own ceremonies, their own songs, their own dances. And so, for just, oh my gosh, I lost my train of thought. What was your question again? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just that, what I was going on, um, music is medicine, you know, that's why we have powwows, you know, um, we are so attracted to the drums, and that's why you hear a lot of the powwow samples, the drum samples, you know, because of those lower frequencies, those are healing frequencies, you know, they even have studies in, like, modern day medicine of acoustic therapy, you know, treating ED, and so, that's, so for me to share my music, that's what I want my music to be, is medicine to you know heal people to give them you know joy or just to uprise them you know or some inspiration and i know some of the songs that i played you know they were kind of you know like my gosh should i dance to this should i not but you know that's what we indigenous people do we dance to heal because 
You know, med music is medicine, and we dance for those, or we perform for those that can't. You know, because that's that's how we are. That's how we've always been. You know, ever since the beginning of time, that's why we have powwows and the, the individual ceremonies. You know, we don't have, we don't call them just the people now. We call them patients because you know we have some ceremonies to because music is medicine. That's right. All right awesome guys. Oh, one more question. Sure. Um, well, I know in traditional Native culture there's a big emphasis on the analog and kind of traditional musical instruments, but is there any sort of aversion or stigma to sort of Native moving into more electronic, sort of digital, which could be viewed as like a modern form of music? Um, you know what? In, I can't speak for all Indigenous people, but me as myself, as a Navajo, my people are really resilient, you know. Um, we just come to, you know, adapt into these new modern worlds, you know. In this world, you know, traditionally, this is the fifth world. We call it the good end world. And so when I, you know, when, when we, as indigenous people, you know, when we try to share our music and integrate our own people's music, you know, a lot of people look at that as, you know, that's, that's not good, that's not traditional. But at the same time, you know, I look at it as a sense of, resiliency in order to keep our culture and our tradition and our music and our songs alive you know so that i could share it with my kids you know because when my son tells me you know he's he tells his friends about my music and they really like it and they start calling me and so it's that's what that's what i really would like you know that's what really brings me joy so thank you guys so much thank you guys, you guys for